Hey everybody, Plushy here. So I decided to follow the trend of doing a SSR ticket recommendation video since I feel like a lot of people are really excited about this event and a lot of people also don't want to sort of waste this once in a lifetime opportunity and would want to know what servants to pick that is the most optimal. So I'm going to give a short rundown on characters that I feel like are particularly worth picking and go over why I think that is the case. So before I start the video, I want to preface this by saying that my general uh, recommendation for picking damage dealers uh, is to actually raise their MP levels, especially from 1 to 2, since that's the most boost you get uh, from upgrading an MP, instead of picking another MP1 servant, especially if you're deciding two uh, relatively similar servants in terms of the role they fill. FGO is a game that heavily rewards uh, investing into a few servants instead of trying to cast your net as wide as possible and trying to obtain every servant but only at MP1, especially after the debut of 90 plus and 90 plus plus nodes in the future, uh, these HP lines of the enemies are going to be uh, increasing by quite a large margin. So it would be more desirable to have a higher MP damage dealer instead of having a bunch of MP1s that just fail to kill regardless which one you choose. Of course, there are exceptions, and I will sort of bring that up when we get to those servants. Anyways, let's get into the first class, Sabres. So all three Sabres serve kind of the same role in terms of what you want them to do, which is being farmers, and they are all going to be fitting pretty okay into the double coin sky of light and Oberon system. Uh, Artoria is definitely the highlight of the three, considering she doesn't really need to wait for any upgrades to be good already. Um, she has a very short cooldown battery with a 5 turn cooldown on her 30 MP battery. She also has a base MP refund at 20 at OC1 that scales with OC, which will be a little bit important, we'll get into later. Um, and she has a upgraded mana burst which also has an additional 30% MP damage up on top of the 50% buster up. So all of this combines to be a very high damaging uh you know, AoE Saber, and she can also fit very well with the double Koyan Sky of Light system because of that short cooldown battery. You can run her with K Scope and double Koyan Sky of Light and any Mystic Code instead of like the other standard quote unquote of 50 MP chargers or 30 MP chargers with 20 refund on their MP, which will need a um, Atlas Mystic Code to further reduce the cooldown by another two turns. Artoria has the flexibility to run any Mystic Code you want which will heavily bolster her last wave damage or whichever wave you want her to do the most damage. And in the future, if the enemy's HP get too high, you can start using Plug Suit and Oberon. She fits very well in that as well because of the MP damage up effect on her mana burst. The one sort of gripe I have with her is that her major buff is only one turn, so you can't really take advantage of the Coin Sky of Light cooldown reduction to stack it twice on the final wave. However, she still does very good damage with Oberon. And one more thing to future proof is that she can actually run uh, the new CE Rising Mud Rain, which will come out in the future in the general pool, uh, instead of running a 50 MP start CE, which is right now most commonly cranking the Bunyan CE, because she has an overcharge effect that will give her MP refund. And this uh, Rising Mud Rain CE is basically a alternative Black Grail that sacrifices some MP damage boost for a one-time overcharge boost. So she can actually run that as demonstrated here in this clip. So yeah, her damage is even better than a lot of the other options. Mordred is another choice that is very similar to Artoria, but as of now, she is pretty lackluster. Um, she doesn't have any of the pros that I mentioned previously with Artoria. However, she is going to be getting a buff in the very far away future, like two years in the future but she does change her mana burst from a one turn effect to a three time three turn effect, as well as have an additional attack up on the effect. So this allows her to actually stack the mana burst twice on the third wave, bolstering her damage quite a bit when you're using Plug Oberon. Uh, Morgid, just like Artoria, can also run Rising Mud Rain instead of a 50 MP start CE. So she definitely is, uh, you know, posing a 
big competition to Artoria currently in JP. However, I do not recommend uh, to future-proof something that is, you know, only good and just about on par with the current available Artoria in two years. I personally wouldn't recommend Altera, even though she will be getting a buff which will give her 30 MP battery, and she will have the ability to 3 turn loop with Double Coin Skya plug Oberon with her Pen 2 maxed with a 50 MP start CE, but that's just any buster unit with 30 MP battery, which is basically nothing special. And Altera, even though she does have solid damage with the upgraded MP, high attack stat, uh, 3 turn MP damage up effect that is stackable, and quite a bit of crit support skills as well, generally I don't think she's a worthy pick. Unfortunately for the archers, I don't recommend picking most of them. I think Arjuna and Napoleon are both underwhelming compared to their limited uh, versions uh, counterparts like Gil and Ishtar. And Orion is a slow single target arts damage dealer. She isn't even a very good anti male unit considering it is only a one turn duration effect on a skill. Uh, so you can't really loop it. She is pretty good in turtle teams because she can keep using her MP to drain the enemy's gauge. But do you really care about that in this day and age? Sometimes you do, most of the times you don't. So I don't recommend any of them. However, Tesla is a extremely powerful choice. Uh, he has gotten a lot of buffs throughout the years and the most recent one allows him to have a more consistent stun on all enemies with his MP as well as making his second skill no longer RNG. Uh, with this buff, his second skill now can provide you with a 30% MP damage up and a 20% attack up that is stackable with a double coin sky a cooldown reduction on the final wave. And of course, he also has one of the best skills in my opinion in the game still to this day, uh, Pioneer of the Stars, which gives him 50 MP battery, a bunch of stars, and three turn worths of Invul Pierce. He is a really good challenge quest unit because of this skill and all the other skills as well, because the second skill also gives him defense up and guts, which is a really decent amount of protection. And of course, he also has an upgraded MP, as well as a anti-earth and sky anti-trait mod. Now, do note that this is only against servants, otherwise he'd be actually super extremely broken, which he kind of still is. But this does not apply to any of the trash mobs in potential farming nodes. However, this is still a really wide coverage, especially in challenge quests. Uh, so overall, Tesla, in my opinion, one of the top tier archers in the entire game, period. So definitely a worthy pickup. And of course, he functions well with the double coin Gaia Buster looping comp. But he doesn't really need that to be good, unlike the uh, AoE Sabers I've mentioned above, which in my opinion gets carried pretty hard by that system. As for the Lancers, we have one of my highest recommendations on the entire list, which is Enkidu. Enkidu is an extremely powerful single target Lancer that has gained a lot of relevance in recent years because of the increasing prevalence of either Divine or Threat to Humanity, bosses that are usually really difficult in main story quests that are relatively easily tackled by him. But even outside of that, Enkidu already has extremely good damage. He has a mana burst on his first skill, as well as a bonus either quick or arts 50% buff, which doesn't really affect his MP damage, so either is fine. And he has an upgraded MP that casts a 3 turn 30% defense down on the enemy before it actually does damage. This is actually extremely rare uh, for servants to cast debuffs before the MP does damage. The other example I can immediately think of is Arjuna Altar. And usually these effects allow the servant's MP damage to be really, really good. And the defense down is 30%, which is huge, and it's also three turns. So if you're fighting a single target boss, which usually you are going to be with Enkidu, this actually is a ramp up effect, and every consecutive MP is going to hurt even more. And of course, Enkidu's most famous feat is being able to solo a lot of divine bosses as well as threat to humanity bosses. They work a little bit different because when he is facing against threat to humanity bosses, he is just killing them as fast as possible because of his extra damage against them on his MP. He also has really good survival kit with a 5 turn cooldown evade and a 10 turn cooldown full restore, cleansing all of his debuffs, healing him almost to full, and with the most recent buff, also giving him a 50 MP battery, and he also has a essentially guaranteed stun on 
divine enemies whenever he MPs. So when he's fighting divine, he can actually stall for many, many turns and get the cooldown on his third skill back to heal back to full, essentially. So overall, he is a super solid uh, pick on this list. He doesn't need anyone else to help. And with the most recent 50 MP battery buff, he can actually function in multi-core farming to clear, like, let's say, a giant single target mid wave boss so he is very flexible he doesn't need any particular system or support to carry him and he's one of the best picks and i would recommend even if you don't have him before and you just is going to get him at mp1 he's still going to be doing a lot of damage to particular bosses and going to be a very good solo unit the other pick potentially is Lancer Artoria. I know Lancer Artoria has gotten a buff, which makes her a super counter against chaotic and evil enemies. However, um, I don't really think that is good enough of a buff to warrant using cast uh, Lancer Artoria. Uh, the other biggest point with Lancer Artoria is her massive battery paired up with her ability to recharge her MP just like the other Artoria faces. So she can once again run Rising Mud Rain with double coin and light and plug Oberon and with the added bonus of not even having to have her append to unlock. However, I think all of this is too much future proofing and too much carried by a single composition, so I do not recommend her. And the other Lancers are just, you know, it's Karna, 25 battery Lamau, and it's Bradamante and yeah they aren't the best you know in today's standards so next let's talk about writers and of course we can't talk about writers without bringing up ozymandias ozymandias has become one of the strongest single target servants in the entire game after his mp upgrade his mp not just increased in base damage but it also casts sunfield which allows him to trigger his first skill effects which is a 10 star per turn as well as a team wide 30 percent crit up both for three turns but the mp also reduces his cooldown by one which allows him to spam a lot of his very powerful steroids like his skill one with the charisma as well as the crit up and the star per turn also his imperial privilege which is one of the strongest buffs in the entire game if you land all of the effects and you can guarantee that if you wait a little bit longer for his skill 3 cooldown because his skill 3 is one turn cooldown uh, higher than the imperial privilege but with this uh, cooldown reduction on his MP, it's actually very manageable. He can just keep healing up with his skill 2 and stack a bunch of uh, steroids on himself against a caster boss. So he's near unstoppable. He also has an MP seal on his MP to further delay uh, the MP turn for him to get his cooldowns back. So he's a super powerful single target rider, boss killer. However, there are a lot of free options that are super powerful as well for single target rider boss killers, such as Ushiwakamaru, which is a powerhouse of a low star who kind of falls off against like super tanky casters where she can't really finish it fast, but she still gets the job done in most cases. Um, and there are also characters like Ryder Kintoki, which will be getting a rerun in the future. He kind of is a one-trick pony, but he also kind of destroys softer caster bosses. But more importantly, we will be getting a brand new welfare very, very soon this Halloween in the form of Ryder Liz. And Ryder Liz is one of the strongest single target riders in the entire game, and she's completely free. She has a full cleanse on her MP. She has really short cooldowns on her skills with a 554 cooldown. She has a star bomb tag onto a battery. She has a three time three turn invul on a five turn cooldown, which is a superb survival skill on par with some of the best uh you know solo units out there and overall she's just such a great free choice that if you really want a single target rider boss killer just wait for this halloween so ozymandias with how great he is i actually don't really recommend that hard because he also doesn't really perform well in farming either despite his ability to charge the entire team with 20 mp battery and a small charisma he just doesn't have uh, the anti-trait or the battery to be a really relevant farmer. On the other hand, Maeve is actually quite a relevant multi-core farmer if you want her to be, considering her buffs allows her to charge both Fey and male allies with 30 MP battery and buff male allies with a whopping 40% attack up. 
So sometimes you do see her actually appear in 90 plus plus node farming just because of those traits alongside male allies uh, for different waves and she herself of course can clear a single target wave. But do note that her own damage even after an MP upgrade is not too amazing so I wouldn't really recommend if you want to pick her up uh, for the first time for that one MP level. However, if you are leveling up her MP from 1 to 2, I think she is a pretty good choice. Another often overlooked, in my opinion, option is actually Drake. Uh, Drake has gotten quite a bit of buffs since her debut, and she, once again, aged pretty okay in today's meta. She has an upgraded MP, which means that she has a baseline guarantee for her damage. She also got a skill 2 buff, which gives her a 3 turn defense ignore effect, which is kind of less good on her considering she's not really a good boss killer, but it is a very rare effect. But she also got a 3 turn 20% buster up, which used to be her biggest problem. She didn't have a long lasting steroid for Koinskaya's cooldown reduction to take advantage of. Now she does, even though the number isn't really the greatest. And of course she has Pioneer of the Stars, one of the best skills in the entire game. Now once again, I don't think it is nearly as good as Tesla because she isn't really a good boss killer, so you're usually only using this as a 50 MP battery. So she's kind of the character that I wouldn't recommend picking up if you don't have her, but I would recommend upgrading her MP from 1 to 2 if you don't have anyone else to pick. And unfortunately, the other three riders, Achilles, Europa and Quetzalcoatl, I don't really recommend. Achilles simply with Quick not being the best looping class anymore, I can no longer really recommend him. Uh, Europa is sort of a, I don't think she is just a five star Marie. I think she's a little bit better than that, but overall she's kind of just a worse option than Drake if you want an AOE buster rider. And finally Quetzalcoatl is just straight up worse than uh, Ozymandias, which is kind of sad and she didn't get a buff during Lost Belt 7. so that's a safe skip in terms of gameplay unfortunately so next let's get into the casters and first of all i want to talk a little bit about sanzong i think sanzong's uh value has you know is used to be high kind of fell off but now has risen back pretty well because of the advent of 90 plus plus nodes with multi-core farming uh, because she has a massive MP battery, you don't really need any external help for her to fire off her MP. And if you do uh, give her a MP start CE, she can actually use her MP twice extremely easily as well. Uh, Sanzang also has an upgraded MP. Even though she is a caster, her damage isn't the best. Uh, the upgraded MP gives her a baseline level of damage. Uh, she also has some form of team utility with the 20% attack up for 3 turns on her second skill and MP gain up on her third skill. So in 90 plus plus multi-core farming, Sanzang can be pretty relevant. You might need a higher MP level though and not just MP1. So she is another choice that I would recommend upgrading your MP with, especially from mp1 to 2 but not straight up picking just for mp1 and of course we get into the two elephants in the room uh, which is not the actual elephant in the room waver and tamamo first of all let's talk about waver uh waver is still a really good support you know 50 mp battery helps in a lot of farming as i've demonstrated uh you can even use him in melusine comps if you can't afford to roll for both uh, Oberon and Coin Sky of Light. So, you know, 50 MP battery chargers are always not going to be bad. He also has good buffs, like actual good buffs 30% attack up, 50% crit up, both for three turns, as well as a sizable defense up that can protect your team for quite a long time. His MP is also really solid. It is a defense down, but also a AoE drain and stun. It's a really disruptive MP that can buy your team a lot of extra turns. Now, if you don't really care about the high difficulty, quest aspect since you might be running Castoria comps instead and if you have a lot of MP chargers especially with two more coming in the near future with Koyan Sky of Light and Oberon uh, he might actually feel a little bit lackluster if you have a lot of good general 50 MP chargers that can work in any card type uh, like Oberon, Rainus, and Castoria, I'm actually counting Castoria, um, you might start to feel like he's a little bit lackluster because he's usually like the fourth choice that you don't really use. However, he is still a really solid option if you don't have him. I don't recommend upgrading his MP for obvious reasons, but if you don't really know who to pick and you don't have him, I still think he's one of the best picks you can have. Tamamo, interestingly, kind of has the opposite problem 
as Waver. Where Waver is extremely easy to use, a lot of his niches are kind of overcrowded in today's FGO meta, such as, you know, being a 50 MP charger. Tamamo, on the other hand, is not that easy to use, but she has the irreplaceable effect of not just giving your entire team heals, but also give your entire team more MP charges and skill cooldown reduction on her MP. She is still the only character that can perpetually reduce the team's cooldown on an MP effect. She also doubles as one of the highest arts damage boosting characters in the entire game, with her skill 1 and her skill 3 still being a 50% arts up, she can bolster your arts MP damage to sky high, especially considering if you're using Oberon as well, her skill 1 skills very well with Oberon skill 3. Tamamo, however, is not that easy to use because she doesn't give you any instant effects, such as instant battery to charge your entire team, or instant hard survival, such as Merlin's Illusion. Tamamo is sort of a support that needs another support to pair with to be the most optimal, uh, but you know, with Castoria being this strong of an art support, Tamamo fits really well in a slower arts team. She can keep Castoria's broken, st uh, broken skills duration up, and she can also help Castoria overcharge her MP to give you know more stacks of solemn defense. So overall, I think Tamamo is still a really, really solid pick. She has always been quite unstoppable if you use her in a slower arts team and you get the engine running. And I believe if she gets a you know semi-relevant buff in JP in the future, she's going to be a huge game changer. Outside of those three, I don't recommend the other two options, which is Anastasia and Scheherazade. Um, casters and Assassins are both traditionally bad damage dealing classes because of their inherent low stats as well as their hidden 0.9 times multiplier. And if you don't have anything super special to offer such as Sanzang's ADMP battery, I don't think you are really going to scale very well in today's meta. Usually your job will be stolen by alter egos and berserkers of the same card type. So yeah, I don't really recommend either of these. And for assassins, this might be a surprise, I don't recommend picking any of them. Osakabe Hime, although I do believe she is not nearly as bad as people make her out to be, she's more of a utility tool rather than a core support, and for a lot of people that is not good enough to use their SSR ticket on. However, she also is you know, good in a way where she doesn't really care about MP levels, but that's not really enough to convince most people I believe. Jack the Ripper, traditionally one of the best choices for single target assassins, just doesn't really age well anymore which is kind of funny because she doesn't age at all and she's a lolly. Um, but Jack the Ripper in general has low damage and, you know, she's just carried by her cards. And I feel like in these days, being carried by your cards is not good enough anymore. She also does have a full buff strip on one of her skills, which is the only good part of her kit in my personal opinion at this point. And, you know, she has a lot of awkward other stuff and you might be better off with a Berserker if you're trying to use a Assassin Damage Dealer. Uh, the same goes for Li Xuan. Li Xuan is really good in certain cases, you know, he has the Invul Pierce, he has the crit damage, but if you really want a single target arts damage dealer, I'd recommend going for the next character that I'm going to bring up on my recommended list in the Berserker category. And of course, we can't talk about Berserkers without first mentioning Vlad the Third. Vlad the Third has become one of the most popular characters ever since Castoria came out because of his high hit MP and his ability to loop it and him being in the Berserker class, he has been the favorite of many people in both farming and boss killing. Vlad the Third has a 30 MP battery as well as a really solid second skill that gives him a 30% attack up and defense up for 3 turns and his upgraded third skill gives him an additional guts but more importantly a 3 turn MP game buff which allows him to loop his MP with double Castoria. He also has his MP upgraded twice but you know it's actually just one upgrade because the first upgrade is just to bring him up to a normal you know MP damage among art single targets because his MP damage used to be scuffed. And his MP also generates a bunch of stars, which is quite rare for arts MPs in general. However, do note some stuff here. Uh, Vlad the Third isn't that amazing without double Castoria. Uh, he isn't someone that you can just fix by slapping on a Shufu instead for a budget option. I do think he is hard carried by specifically 
uh, double Castoria. And also, if you used to not have him at all, just getting him at MP1 might not be able to make him the Omni boss killer slash single target farmer that you might want him to be. Uh, I do highly recommend upgrading his MP from MP1 to MP2, or even if you don't have anyone to pick from MP2 to MP3, I don't really recommend picking him at MP1 immediately uh, unless you don't have anyone else to pick. I recommend, you know, going back to the video, looking up some other characters that don't really need MP2 to already be super effective, such as Enkidu, instead as your choice. And of course, the other super solid choice in the Berserker category is Ku Alter. Uh, Ku Alter is still today one of the best solo servants in the entire game, with his upgraded MP dishing out massive amounts of damage, as well as removing all defensive buffs before he actually does damage with the MP, allowing him to bypass a lot of random enemy gimmicks. He also, of course, has what he always had, the protection from arrows with no duration and the relatively short cooldown guts, and of course his skill 1 with an attack down and crit chance down on the enemy allows him to not get crit super easily, paired up with his MP effect that gives him defense up, really makes him not instantly die even if he doesn't have protection from arrows up uh, in you know just a couple of hits. So Kualter, even to this day, I think on par with Tyra, there are certain cases where you actually use him over Tyra if you need immediate damage, uh, and he also functions better at lower MP levels than Tyra, because obviously he has triple buster, uh, he doesn't really need the MP to deal massive amounts of damage compared to someone like Tyra, but once again, same problem with Tyra. Do you really care about solos? If you don't care about solos, and if you really want to solo, you can always just borrow someone's 120 cool alter. I'm pretty sure there are no shortage of 120 cool alters for a lot of people's friend list. So yeah, he's kind of an awkward pick. If you like this you know, style of soloing, yeah, sure, go with it. If you don't really like the style of soloing, then he's kind of pointless. Um, he is also one of the choices though, even being a damage dealer that doesn't really need MP2 to be super effective and do what he does. The other two options, Shang Yu and Nightingale, I don't really recommend. Shang Yu still has the problem of having extremely crappy refund and being stuck to doing buster crits, which is not amazing for a quick servant. And Nightingale, despite getting a buff recently on her third skill, also giving uh, the target 30% crit for three turns, I still think she is super niche and usually not worth the pick with a SSR ticket. Jean is dead. I'm sorry. I think Jean is just completely overshadowed by Castoria stall teams in this day and age, and her buff doesn't help her at all. Her buff is actually a offensive buff for some reason. So yeah, unfortunately, I don't recommend Jean. Probably the least recommended character in the entire list. Sitanai is actually pretty solid. There are certain cases where you're fighting foreigners that you really want an alter ego and Sitanai will perform well, but those cases are super rare. And most cases, if you want an alter ego, you might as well go for Vlad, who also does 1.5 times damage, but to every class except for foreigners. So I guess there is a little bit of a lack of overlap in that category, but I really wouldn't pick uh, someone with an SSR ticket just to deal with foreigners. So unfortunately, Sitanai, I also don't recommend. Now we get into the actual, literal elephant in the room, Jinako, who is actually pretty interesting. Uh, currently, as of now in NA, she's not that useful. She can solo a lot of stuff with her bulky HP stats, as well as her spammable invul on her MP. However, generally, you don't really want a low damage, low refund AoE arts unit. You just rather finish stuff off quicker. However, during the BB Girlfriend event, she does get a massive buff on her skill 3, uh, her targetable invul skill that now has an additional 30% MP damage up for 3 turns, as well as more importantly, a 3 turn 50% anti-lawful power mod. She instantly became one of the best anti-lawful niche supports in the entire game. Uh, obviously, if you're into challenge quest min turns or just doing challenge quests in general and having more choices, Jinako suddenly becomes a really good pick because you don't really need her MP levels, you're not using her MP anyways, and you're using her as an anti-lawful support. Her anti-lawful support is so good 
uh, that she actually bled into some 90 plus plus farming comps. For example, the most recent Morgan Fest uh, lotto farming, there are certain nodes that have a lot of lawful enemies, and Jinako actually played quite the critical role in certain farming compositions. Uh, however, her support ability in general still lands in the niche category, kind of feels the same as Osakabe Hime. So overall, I wouldn't recommend, but if you're like a super hardcore uh, player and you don't really have Jinako, because that is the case with me, I didn't really, it never occurred to me that I would have to roll for Jinako, um, then she's actually a really good pick for a niche support in the future. Anyways, hope you guys enjoyed this short rundown of all the choices that I kind of recommend picking in this SSR ticket. Obviously, you should go for whoever you like because this is once again a once in a lifetime opportunity for you to obtain servants that you probably won't be able to afford, um, especially servants that are story locked. They are not spookable. They're relatively rare and exclusive. Uh, so, you know, it is a great chance to pick some of them up. But if you really don't know who to pick up and you want some advice, I hope this video helped a little bit. I have to be really brief on all of them because I went through a lot of servants in this one short video. So if you have any questions, please raise them in the comment section. I'll try to answer as much as possible. And thank you guys for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one.